Khalifa Tower in Dubai is the world's tallest building. This superstructure is supported by large reinforced concrete that has metal and mesh added to provide extra support against stress. If you want to build something that's tall and endures, you need a very strong foundation. When you build the foundation of existence on the revelation of God, you can go through the worst storms of life and still stand strong. From the founding of my church 25 years ago, my wife's son and I were very clear about the way we would do ministry. We wanted to build a relevant contemporary church, a church that would impact our culture and its marketplace, which really refers to the seven pillars of the society we live in. If we can touch these seven pillars, or what Lance War now calls mountains, we can effectively reach our world for Jesus Christ. When you read the Bible, Jesus was very comfortable reaching out to the marketplace. Most of the miracles Jesus did were done in the marketplace. But how can we successfully engage the marketplace and still keep our spiritual core values intact? The ability to be in the world and not of the world comes when you stay connected with the Holy Spirit in everything you do, in whatever situation you may be in. Today, I want to encourage you through my message to climb up the marketplace mountain that you belong to and bring the presence of God with you so that many lives will be blessed. But before that, let's watch this video about the great work of a pastor in the Philippines. It was in 1996. I was an associate pastor then when I decided to go to Singapore for the Bible school. One of the programs that you have there was the Church Without Walls. And at the back of my mind, I was my mind was kind of glowed really. Church Without Walls. So I just beginning to start to implement, to, to understand it like the church should function outside the walls of the church. We received an invitation because there was a program that was lodged from the national government, from the local government unit, the, about microfinance. This program frame came about when I was implementing a program about human development, giving our people an opportunity to be self-sufficient. So that's where we were assigned to design the mechanics. I said, the only way we can really change the landscape of our community is educating the heart and the mind of the people. Because there were several factors to look into, like what should be the nature of the group. These should be groups in, into smaller groups. So the idea of cell group comes in, wherein we teach from the Word of God principles, values. It talks about relationship with the Lord. Kadalhan kayo ko nga katun sa frame. Makabalo na ko paano magpakumbaba. Matakot sa Diyos at mag, marunong na akong mapagbigay na ako ngayon. Nung na-admit yung anak ko, ang PhilHealth ko sa frame ang nakatulong sa akin. Kung hindi kami nag-save sa PhilHealth namin sa frame, hindi ko kaya gustusan yung pangangailangan ko sa health ng aking anak. I think the total membership of Frame is 31,000 and they started saving their savings before when they started it was only 1,000 pesos. I think today they have more than 30 million pesos. I 
studied in City Harvest where, you know, it, there's the practical side of the ministry that really prepares me, um, the attitude in terms of how to do the ministry. It, it was really something that, that just prepared me for the job that I had to assume the two months after I arrived from City Harvest. Are you feeling burned out, mentally and physically? Maybe you are stuck, emotionally drained from strained relationships with your spouse, at work, or with family. How can you keep going? The Bible says that God wants to carry your burdens. But what does that mean for you? Kong Hee has a three-disc series called Presence of God, Heaven on Earth that will strengthen your faith and will teach you how, through the Holy Spirit, God can sustain you. Something in your life is just drained out because of a crisis in your family, in your relationship. It's been going on for a long time. One touch, the woman with this chronic 12-year disease touched Jesus and everything was changed. Kong and his wife's son have been called to bring God's Word to you every week to see you blessed and helped. Today, they want you to have this life-changing three-disc resource called Presence of God, Heaven on Earth. Please visit konghee.com to place your order. Learn of God's assurance to us that you'll find rest in His presence. Click on this special offer and we'll send you Presence of God, Heaven on Earth. Live in perfect peace and complete rest. We wanted to build a relevant contemporary church, a church that will impact the marketplace. Everyone say, the marketplace. Now, when you read the Bible, you're going to find Jesus very comfortable in reaching out to the marketplace. Most of his parables were marketplace stories. Jesus talked about building construction. He talked about winemaking, farming, ranching, staff management. Most of the miracles Jesus did were in the marketplace. Most of his friends were from there. In fact, Jesus advises us in the gospel to listen carefully to the voices and the cries that were coming out from the marketplace today. You know, it was the same for the apostles in the early church. Paul may have gone to the synagogue once a week to have the services, to talk to the people, but every single day, you'll find Paul, the great apostle, engaging the marketplace for the kingdom of God. Now, at a May 2000 weekend, so this was a long time ago, we declared one weekend that the marketplace is our mission field. I told the people, the fact that we are all full-time believers, living for God 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, so we are to shine for Jesus at work, in school, at play, in church, in our offices, in our classrooms. The moment you become a follower of Jesus Christ, you are on a mission in life. And you know what? The marketplace is your mission field. Shenton Way is your mission field. Orchard Road is your mission field. Your junior college, your polytechnic, the National University of Singapore, the NTU, wherever you are planted, that is your mission field. Everybody say with me, say, the marketplace is my mission field. But how to engage the marketplace? Now, we learned as we went along. So we started our businessman ministry sometime in the late 1990s. And then we started our City Harvest Educational Center, CHEC. And through Sun's Crossover Project, we were engaging pop culture. But because clarity is power, I wasn't satisfied. I wanted things to be clearer. So I prayed, Lord Jesus Christ, you got to make it clearer for me, for us, for the church. How are we going to be sought and light in the world, outside the four walls of City Harvest Church? Then in November 2004, I was talking to a scholar in Indonesia. And he said to me, he said, you know what, Pastor Kong? Have you heard of a man called Lauren Cunningham? I said, of course, everybody knows Lauren Cunningham. He's the famous founder of YWAM, Youth with a Mission. My scholar friend said, you know what, Kong? 
in the mid 1970s, Lauren Cunningham talked about the seven shapers of society. What do you talk about? The seven shapers of society. There are seven things that will shape the philosophy and the value system of every nation, every country, and every society. Immediately, I took out my Palm OS. You know, in those days, you don't have the Android, you don't have Blackberry, you don't have iPhone. I took out my Palm OS, and I took it down. I was so intrigued by what I wrote. For the next few weeks and months, I could not get all these thoughts out of my mind. I was so excited. I was meditating on it night and day. I couldn't think of anything else, literally. I call it the seven pillars of society. The first pillar, you have the pillar of religion. Second pillar is the pillar of family. Number three, the pillar of business. Number four, the pillar of education. Number five, the pillar of government. Number six, the pillar of arts and entertainment. Number seven, you have the pillar of the mass media. Now, traditionally, the church, we the church, we are strong in religion, right? I mean, we preach the gospel, we print Bibles, we do missions, we plant churches. We are very strong in the realm of religion. We are a religious group. <laughs> the pillar of family. Traditionally, we are also strong over here. We have Sunday school. In fact, this weekend, they are celebrating the Children's Day Sunday school program. And then we have premarital counseling. We have marriage enrichment courses. We conduct weddings. We are strong when it comes to family. But when it comes to the rest of business and education and government and us entertainment and the mass media, this is where most Christians shy away from these arenas. Now, what I'm telling you here tonight is not even theology. I'm simply telling you sociology. This is how society is being ordered and arranged. So when Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, the word world in the Greek is cosmos, which means the way a society, a group is being ordered, organized, structured, and arranged. So what is Jesus telling us in the Great Commission? He said, we must take the kingdom of God into every social order and social arrangement. These seven pillars became foundational to my teaching series called the Cultural Mandate. Now, at about the same time, there was a man in the United States by the name of Lance Warnow from New York City, and he received a similar revelation. We never met. We never spoke, but he got the same thing. He called it the 7M mandate. And the teaching has taken America by storm. Instead of seven pillars, he called it the seven mountains. But they are exactly the same thing. Amazingly, he got it from the same source, from Lauren Cunningham. At about the same time, I spoke to my friend in Indonesia. In fact, Lance Wall now says in his research, 3% of the world population controls 97% of all the choices we make. 3% at the very top in every pillar, in every dimension, in every mountain controls 97% of all the choices that we will ever make in life. I'll give you an example. In the 1940s, Adolf Hitler rose all the way to the top. He brought widespread hatred and racism, especially anti-Semitism. He started World War II and killed 60 million people, 2.5% of the world population, one man, because he went all the way to the top of the mountain. In the 1960s, the Beatles rose all the way to the top of the mountain of us entertainment. Forever change the youth culture of a whole generation. How did they do it? They went all the way to the top and started to shape the value system 
of the youth. Now, we are all born again, spirit-filled Christians. How many of you are born again, you're filled in the Holy Spirit, and you're so glad and grateful to God? Just lift both your hands and wave a bit. <laughs> amen, amen. We are born again. We are spirit-filled. Jesus, according to my Bible, has made us what? Kings and priests unto God. Everybody say, I'm a king and a priest. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're a king and a priest. That means we are able to influence and impact all these mountains. What is Jesus' prayer? Tonight, when we have Holy Communion, you say it. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Where? Here on earth. As it is in heaven. God wants us as kings and priests. That means as priests, we have the anointing. We are prophetic. But as kings, we rise to the top of the mountain to be one of the 3% decision makers. And we begin to shape. We begin to influence, to impact, and bring down the kingdom of God into the sphere God has put us in. You see, the Bible says, righteousness exhausts a nation. When there's righteousness in the air, in the atmosphere, not only are people happier and healthier, there'll be an open heaven where the gospel and the kingdom of God can permeate through the entire country. So this is what God wants. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I've been very blessed. Basically, let me tell you what I'm saying. It's basically taken from Lance Warnow's teaching. <laughs> so I've been very blessed by, his, by listening to the teaching of Lance. It shows that God is not just speaking to us here in Asia, but He's speaking to the entire body of Christ all around the world. But how privileged we are to be among the first fruits of this revelation in the last days. And we have a church that can actually live out and demonstrate this truth. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. How do we rise to the top of these seven mountains? I want to share with you four keys. Number one, you got to assimilate. You got to assimilate. For too long, we split the gospel into half. We divide the church from society. We divide what is sacred and what is secular. We divide what is holy and what is worldly. Oh, be careful, be careful, don't do that, it's worldly. We divide what is spiritual and what is natural. But you gotta realize something, the gospel of the kingdom touches both. Jesus not only wants to heal your soul, He wants to heal your body. Jesus not only wants to give you riches in heaven, He wants to bless you with provision so that you can be the head and not the tail here on earth. Somebody say amen. Now in Jeremiah 29, God spoke to His people in Babylon. Where? In Babylon, in the world. It says in verse 4, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carry into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Everybody say Babylon. Babylon. God was speaking to His people where? In Babylon. So in the midst of a worldly, ungodly, decadent society, what should you do in the Babylonian world? What should you do in the world? God says this, verse 5, build houses, settle down, plant gardens, eat what they produce. See, that means assimilate into the culture, build companies, establish businesses, groom your careers, enjoy its profits. Notice God didn't say, Go and hide in the church, hide under the pews and pray for the rapture to come. God didn't say, close your eyes, shut your ears, shut your mouth, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, and pray that Jesus quickly will come and take you home. No, God says, get out. Go outside the four walls of your house. Get involved in society. 
and then it says in verse 6, marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. So God wants us to increase, to multiply, to grow. Where? In Babylon. In the world. In fact, the word vocation, you know, when you fill up a form, they say, what is your vocation? The word vocation, the original Latin word is vocare, where you get the word vocal. See, vocation, vocal. It means your calling. Your vocation is your calling. It's your calling. So what is your vocation? Well, I'm an engineer. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a teacher. I'm a programmer. I'm a, a business person. I'm a trader. I am a sales executive, a manager. That's God's calling for you in the marketplace. See, when you walk in that vocation, in that calling, there's an anointing that will back you up. You got to understand. You know, what is the anointing for? The anointing is not for you in your quiet time to feel the goosebumps on your goosebumps. The anointing is for you to fulfill your divine assignment so that you'll be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Friends, God wants you to increase in your position, in your influence, to be a leader in your industry, to be a king on your mountain. Look at verse 7 here. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it. Because if it prospers, you too will prosper. So God doesn't want you to be antagonistic in a relationship with the world. God puts you in a company. He doesn't want you to adopt an antagonistic attitude toward your company. He wants us to fully engage in it. He said, pray for the peace. Jesus says, be a peacemaker. In other words, have good relationship with the people of Babylon. Pray for your company to prosper. Better still, pray that you have the wisdom of God to help your company prosper. And then when your company prosper, you will prosper. So what is God's will? That you prosper so much, you get promoted to be the leader of your company. And then you open the windows of heaven and bring in the gospel of the kingdom. You see, look at verse 11, and this is the verse, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, that we all love so much. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Where is that future and a hope? Not in heaven. The future is in the secular world. The hope is for you to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, in the mountains that God has put you in, that you rise all the way to the top to be a shaper of the value system. So God wants us to fully assimilate into our culture. He wants us to blend in like Joseph. Joseph blended in so much, his own brothers couldn't recognize him. I believe by now you would have considered which mountain of society you belong to. The reason why it's so important for us to have a revelation of this message is because all these seven pillars shape every nation, society, and culture. Whether you're from the mountain of religion, family, business, education, government, arts and entertainment, or mass media, you have been divinely placed there by God. Jesus wants us to bring the kingdom of God into all of society. And that is why we have to rise up to the top of the mountain we belong to. God doesn't want us to be antagonistic towards the world. Rather, He wants us to fully engage it without compromising on our values. God wants us to have good relationships with the people in our workplace, to build companies and businesses to excel in what we do. If there's a desire of your heart, then say this prayer with me. Dear God, please help me to be anointed for the marketplace, assimilating into it as salt and light of the kingdom, 
I know you have divinely placed me on my mountain of religion, family, business, education, government, us and entertainment, or mass media, whatever it is, just say it now. Thank you for this mountain. And I pray you will grant me divine favor and give me outward mobility. I want to climb up this mountain and help me bring your kingdom in. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Are you feeling burned out mentally and physically? Maybe you are stuck, emotionally drained from strained relationships with your spouse, at work, or with family. How can you keep going? The Bible says that God wants to carry your burdens. But what does that mean for you? Kong He has a three-disc series called Presence of God, Heaven on Earth that will strengthen your faith and will teach you how, through the Holy Spirit, God can sustain you. Something in your life is just drained out because of a crisis in your family, in your relationship. It's been going on for a long time. One touch, the woman with this chronic 12-year disease touched Jesus and everything was changed. Kong and his wife, Son, have been called to bring God's Word to you every week to see you blessed and helped. Today, they want you to have this life-changing three-disc resource called Presence of God, Heaven on Earth. Please visit konghee.com to place your order. Learn of God's assurance to us that you'll find rest in His presence. Click on this special offer and we'll send you Presence of God, Heaven on Earth. Live in perfect peace and complete rest. Kong and I believe that through you, the people in your circle of influence will come to know the love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Truly, that's the reason why Simon and I serve the Lord. We want to see the whole world coming to Jesus. Your prayers and your support are making a tremendous difference. God bless and see you the next time. Bye. Too late.